This presentation is on ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is an iatrogenic complication of ovarian stimulation for assisted reproduction technology and other infertility treatments. Following gonadotropin therapy, OHSS usually develops several days after oocyte retrieval or assisted ovulation. This syndrome is characterized by ovarian enlargement due to multiple ovarian cysts and an acute fluid shift into the extravascular space. Results include ascites, hemoconcentration, hypovolemia, and electrolyte imbalances. Based on its clinical presentation, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is divided into mild, moderate, and severe. 8 to 23% of the patients who undergo treatment of assisted reproduction present with mild ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. 1 to 7% present with moderate, and 0.25 to 5% present with severe. The pathogenesis of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is unknown, but the process is related to increased vascular permeability in the regions surrounding the ovaries and their vasculature. Beta-human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, and its analogs, estrogen, estradiol, prolactin, histamine, and prostaglandins, have all been implicated in the past. Vasoactive substances such as interleukins, tumor necrosis factor, TNF, alpha, endothelin-1, and vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, secreted by the ovaries, have been implicated in increasing vascular permeability. The frequency of OHSS may increase if the ovary is overstimulated, as documented by high levels of estradiol and depicted as increased number of follicles and ultrasonography. The incidence is increased when protocols combine gonadotropin-releasing hormone, GnRH, agonists, and gonadotropins, as compared with gonadotropins alone, to induce ovulation. Women of young age, as well as those with low body weight, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or previous episodes of hyperstimulation are all at increased risk for developing OHSS. In addition, an increased number of small and medium-sized follicles and elevated estradiol levels around the assumed time of ovulation increase the incidence. OHSS should be suspected when recent treatment of stimulation to ovulate has been initiated and most likely three to seven days after administration of beta-HCG. 92% of the patients with ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome present with shortness of breath, 99% present with abdominal discomfort, 54% present with gastrointestinal disturbances, such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, 30% present with oliguria, and 13% have peripheral edema. Lethargy and rapid weight gain are other symptoms associated with ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Differential diagnoses include ovarian cysts, ovarian torsion, appendicitis, cholecystitis, ectopic pregnancy, and pelvic inflammatory disease. The following investigations are important for a patient with ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Full blood count. The hypovolemia of OHSS leads to hemoconcentration and creates a hypercoagulable state. Therefore, hematocrit increases. Liver panel. AST, ALT, and alkaline phosphatase will increase. Kidney panel. Renal function is reduced, blood urea and nitrogen and creatinine values are increased, whereas albumin and protein levels are decreased. Electrolyte imbalances, hyperkalemia, and acidosis may also be present. Coagulation profile. OHSS is a hypercoagulable state, likely due to hemoconcentration and hypovolemia. So PT, APTT, and INR will be checked. Beta-HCG concentration. A beta-HCG measurement is useful at more than 12 days after an injection of HCG. A positive result at this stage indicates pregnancy. Such an endogenous source of beta-HCG may lead to deterioration of OHSS. Estradiol levels. Values are increased. Ultrasound may be needed to measure the size of the ovaries, to assess the follicles, and to evaluate ascites. Chest radiograph may be indicated if dyspnea is present. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is a self-limiting disease. The beginning of the resolution of OHSS is apparent when the cysts shrink. In contrast, early detection of progression to the severe form of the syndrome is marked by continuous weight gain, more than 2 pounds per day, 
increased severity of existing symptoms or appearance of new symptoms, for example, vomiting, diarrhea, or dyspnea. Severe OHSS is not common, but it is dangerous, so experience is mandatory for appropriate treatment. Medical therapy is aimed at the correction of fluid and electrolyte imbalance. Thrombosis can occur in the arteries 25% of the time and veins 75% of the time. Therefore, use of heparin, low molecular weight heparin, anti-embolism stockings, and sequential compression devices are all recommended as prophylaxis against thrombosis. Heparin prophylaxis is usually started in patients with a history of thrombosis, factor V Leiden deficiency, or other thrombophilic states before the induction of ovulation. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is a self-limiting disease of the luteal phase. Without luteinizing hormone or its imitator HCG, ovulation or the luteal phase does not occur. Avoidance of HCG during ovarian stimulation offers an opportunity to prevent OHSS in high-risk patients. However, those patients do not conceive. Other options are delaying HCG for 1-3 to three days until estradiol levels plateau or decline, using a GnRH agonist to induce ovulation or lowering doses of HCG. The best preventive method is to adapt the treatment and to closely monitor patients at risk. Remember that women at risk are those with high levels of estrogen and many follicles at the assumed time of ovulation. Patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome should be closely monitored as well. Laboratory findings of a serum estradiol concentration greater than 2000 picograms per milliliter and a progesterone concentration greater than 30 nanograms per milliliter in the early part of the luteal phase are warning signs of developing OHSS. Vaginal intercourse is restricted in women with any grade of OHSS because of the risk of rupturing a cyst. Patients should also avoid impact type activities or strenuous exertion. The prognosis is excellent if ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is mild or moderate. In severe OHSS, the prognosis is optimistic if good treatment is given. Hypercoagulability may endanger the patient. Death from OHSS is largely due to hypovolemic shock and electrolyte imbalance, hemorrhage, and thromboemboli. Estimated fatality rates are 1 per 400,000 to 500,000 stimulated cycles. In summary, OHSS is an iatrogenic complication of ovarian stimulation for assisted reproduction treatment. It leads to acute fluid shifted to the third space. Treatment focuses on correction of fluid and electrolyte imbalance. It generally has an excellent prognosis. Close monitoring of patients at risk and patient education to prevent OHSS is an important part of the management process.